Hey guys, it's Matt here from Henry Shine. Just doing another video today. So today's video, obviously as I'm the CAD CAM specialist for up in Queensland, today's video that I wanted to focus on was digital dentures. So it's like the big buzzword that everyone's talking about. Is it possible, you know, what's happening, how to do it, so on and so forth. Essentially what I wanted to do today was go through how you can go digital by using an intraoral scanner. Um, some factors that a lot of time I get thrown these, you know, questions and it's most often very similar questions that I'm getting. Um, now, if you want to listen to this video, that's great. Like it, share it, send it to your friends. Uh, if you want to get more knowledge than this, so we're actually paying for someone to come out to Australia that we're getting Michael Shearer out. So he's from America. Um, He's a prosthodontist, he does intraoral scanning, he prints his own dentures, um, he does everything in house, he's incredible. So he's going to be down in Sydney uh, on Thursday the 12th of next month. You can register on our Henry Sean website. So if I jump up here to our Henry Sean website, if you go into education and events, you can jump in here and you can register for his course. So it's 650 for the day. Uh, seven CPD points, but in terms of digital dentures, this guy knows more than anyone else most probably in the world, or pretty close to it. It's pretty incredible. He costs us a lot of money to get out here, so, you know, this is one of those occasions where if we're getting one of the leaders in the world out here, I'll jump at it to go along. I'm definitely going, and I'm super pumped to be there. So, this is uh, the part about me uh, coming into this role two years ago that I was genuinely excited about. So. You know, uh, I'd been out of the, the dental industry for 10 years and then when I came back into it and I started to look at videos uh, and I saw that people were doing dentures digitally, this was about three, four, call it four years ago. I was like, whoa, mind blowing. I did not want to work in a lab that was still analog. I really wanted to work in a lab that had gone digital. So hence how I fell into this role and I guess uh, watching people design is one thing, but having the actual TGA approval on materials is another thing. So we're now at that stage. So we now have the next dent denture based material. So this is TGA approved with the next dent, uh, next dent printer. And obviously they've got their T shade. So that's one of them. They've got five different teeth shades, which I've got those ones there. They've got five different denture base shades. Uh, and then obviously, not only have we gotten TGA approval on those resins in the last month or this month, we've also got TGA approval on a flexible splint material, uh, which is the world's first flexible 3D printed material. So that's uh, basically exciting times for this industry. So here's my next, uh, you know, leading into my next uh, segue is um, scanning. So. When people say to me, oh, but it can't scan a dentulus, it, well, the Trios, uh, Trios 3, Trios 4 can. Um, and then another one that people also always throw up at me is, well, you can't get compression when you're scanning, you know, especially the, the upper arch, and you can't get the tissue in around the sulcus and stuff like that. That's very true. So, uh, point one to that argument. So, is when you're pushing or well, when you're taking an impression and you're pushing down on the soft tissue at the back of the palate, you might be pushing it down, let's say half a mil to a mil or something like that, the soft tissue at the back is getting pushed down. So therefore, when we're making our denture and our heat packed denture, did you know that you get shrinkage across the palate? So if I were to get a, a tool to slice it straight through a flask and you were to look at the palate, you would actually see half a mil to a mil worth of uh, gap between the denture and the palate in the in the stone model. So So it's kind of I feel it's two wrongs make a right um, you know, so uh, What we're doing when we're intraoral scanning We're not getting any obviously compression, but we're making that denture to fit perfectly onto that surface So when you actually push the denture up it gets really good suction especially on the upper so now to the next question that uh, people throw up, or not question, but well, I guess it's a question, um, is about the, the tissue, you know, in around the sulcus. Uh, in that regard, you would be doing an intraoral scan on an edentulous area, 
and then you'll go to a tray. Uh, if ever you've tried fitting a digital tray before, they have awesome, awesome suction and you get really good impressions using a digital tray. So uh, if ever you haven't done it yet, reach out to a lab that's gone digital and can print you a, a digital tray and they're incredible to fit. I know that the, uh, the labs that are doing these trays are saying they're getting heaps better impressions back from the dentist. Uh, a really good thing and a good way to go digital, although an analog kind of way to go digital. Um, so another way that you can use an intra old scanner and go digital is, now that we've got the, the materials approved, is you can have, if the patient already has a full upper and a full lower denture, you can reuse that. So what you could do is you could do a wash. After you've done the wash, then you could scan in the, the fitting surface of the denture and you scan around and you fit, scan your teeth. So I can do that. It takes me about two minutes to scan a denture. Now I've only been doing it for a short time. I'm sure after I get used to it and depending on the denture, it would uh, obviously take a lot quicker to scan on some dentures. So you'd scan in the fitting surface around to there. You do that on the lower fitting surface and around to the buccal surface of the teeth. And then if the, if the models fit, now that's a two lowers, right? But if the models fit together well, you can just scan in and do the bite. So that way you're getting, uh, uh, you're getting, um, some, uh, compression. So you're getting some compression. And not only that, uh, you're also, you know, you're skipping your primaries and you're going straight straight to your secondaries and you've got your vertical dimension because you've uh, scanned the bite in like that. So you've actually got a lot of things going and you can basically go straight for, now this is uh, straight for and I'll get to it. Um, depending on exactly what way you want to go, you could go straight to a finish if you felt confident. The lab can use the, the fitting surface of the teeth that you've already done to line everything up so they can make sure everything looks almost identical to their old one. So you could go straight to here. So you could print the base, you could print the teeth, you could bond in the teeth, like what uh, this one is here, where the teeth and that can get bonded together. So you can do it that way. Now, it can get a pretty good aesthetic look um, going on that. Um, and you can do a little bit of staining. You can use some GC Optiglaze in around the teeth to get a little bit better staining. Um, so if you wanted to do it, you could do it that way. You could go all out and go straight to finish. You could print a try-in. So you could test it first. If you say were to use a beta carded teeth in the three shape library, then you could uh, get the lab to print your try-in like this. So the lab could print the try-in with all the undercuts blocked out. You'd do a secondary wash in this, make sure the patient was happy with it. This would then get sent back to the lab with the wash and then they could process, process this and heat pack and cure it in using carded teeth and the carded teeth would slot in where these went. And then because this has got all the undercuts blocked out, you pull it out and invest in traditional. So you could go a traditional denture by going digital originally. Um, now, the other way that you could do it is you could print out the base. So you could print out the base and then you could fit in carded teeth as well. So. Um, now I don't have a demo version of this one here, but I've got it in my Brisbane showroom. So, so, but actually I remembered, I've already brought one over here. So this is something I prepared earlier. So this one here is a denture that's got 3D printed base with carded teeth. So this is Vita's new teeth library. I believe they're doing a soft launch at ADX when we're down there in Sydney. So that's the way that you can go digital. Um, so just to show you that I'm not fibbing and I'm not lying, um, you know, when you do go digital, there actually, there is another one. So that's a digital partial that's been milled out. So that's possible to do. That's like a semi-flexible material. It's called Peak. Um, uh, so we have another product called Acetel or Acetyl that's very similar to that as well. So I'm gonna jump into the scanner. So to give you an idea, this is one that I've done earlier and I'm going to play your video at the end of me speaking. Um, I'm just gonna put it in fast forward or I might speak over it. I'll decide when I get to it. Uh, so this is our upper that's been scanned, fitting surface around to the buckle. 
a lower fitting surface around to the buckle and we don't really need to worry about the lingual area. You can see I haven't scanned that. It's not really important. So you can then just come up here, you can send that to your lab and then your lab can go straight to a try-in or a finish off that. So it is possible. Um, now, uh, just to show you how it scans and a uh, scan strategy for the people that already have triosses and the people out there that also have plan Mecca emeralds, this is possible. You just really need to make sure that you know what you're doing in terms of scan strategy and double stitching and whatnot. So, uh, so if I were to go a uh, new case right now, so I'm gonna use this denture here to scan. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna choose in-house and I'm just gonna go scan only. Next. I'm gonna jump straight into the upper because I don't have a lower here, sorry. Now I promise that this is not in fast forward. I can swear to you this is not in fast forward. This is definitely in real speed. To prove it, I put it in slow speed. All right, so that gives you an idea. Now that scan was about 20 seconds slower than the last time I did it. I swear I did it faster, but that's our area. You can see that what will happen on the software, if there's areas where it's picked up data, uh, it will try and fill it up itself if it can't. But if you were to say, look at this area here and you wanted to fill that back in, you can just come along and rescan it. So this way, uh, when you're going digital, uh, by doing this, you know, you're eliminating impressions uh, as a prosthetist and this is I believe a really good way that you can you know start to really go digital there we go so that's that so two and a half minutes to scan a full lower a full upper a lower is a little bit easier to do than upper because you don't have the big pallet area to do that's got limitations I'm not gonna lie so there are um, you know if they've got a really large ridge then it's really tricky to, to scan here but you can always, uh, you know, pour up a model and scan a model as well. So that's a good thing about this. Um, it can do intraoral if you want to go for that. It, you can scan the denture or you can scan a model. All, all those particular workflows are going to work. Um, so that's how you do that. So after you scan your upper, lower, and then you put them into occlusion, you send them off. You can send them through the lab, and then the lab obviously can start designing. So. There's a handful of labs that I can uh, say that are prosthetists that have gone digital that have 3D printers. So if you do want to send out to a lab, um, let me know, get a hold of me and I'll put you onto that lab or, or labs, um, depending on where you are and, and whatnot. So feel free to call me about that one. Um, that's essentially it. And as I mentioned, at the end of this video, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to record. So I've made a denture on here already. Um, now I've used Vita Teeth. So uh, you'll see in the video, um, you know, the full workflow from an intraoral scan all the way through to making a denture. So uh, that's pretty much all it. So I hope that uh, you got something out of this. You can see I'm excited. I think it's an exciting time in the industry. Um, you know, and as I said, I'm really excited about both the next dent printer, the next dent resins, and also that Keystone flexible splint resin. So I think this is where, you know, um, investment in old materials is no longer there, where investment is in all these new materials and resins. And this is what's gonna, you know, per, uh, what would you say, um, propel us forward into the future into digital dentistry. So thanks for the time uh, today. Thank you for listening. If you liked it, uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe to the Henry Shine Australia page. Um, if you're on my emailing list, hopefully you get this video and you watch it and you get to learn something. Um, you can see that intraoral scanners have come a long way. They're not just you know a couple of units in a quadrant. 
they can scan a full arch well and truly and they can scan soft tissue areas as well. So if you wanted a demo, reach out to a territory manager. Uh, I'll come out and do a demo on whether it be the TRIOS or the Plan Maker Scanner. They can both do that particular workflow. Um, but obviously, uh, it's a big learning curve to get there as well. So I'm not gonna say that you can jump in and start doing this straight away, but you know, clearly I, I just showed you it's possible. And um, all good guys, so take care, enjoy, all the best, and I'll uh, hopefully see you down at ADX or the Michael Shearer's course, it's gonna be an awesome one. So thanks guys, take care, bye.